have a secret wish I wish I could play the organ like Bish But since I cannot, since I cannot I'll give you everything I've got Happy birthday from this singer, piano playing man. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday from this singer, piano player. Good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to Across the Arts. I am your host, Patrick D. McCoy, and on behalf of myself and JEJ Artist, we are delighted that you are joining us today for this special celebration honoring the legendary organist Diane Bish as she marks 80 years old on March 25th. But we're gonna start the celebration today, but I can't get away with not letting you know a list of her accomplishments. Diane Bish is arguably the most visible organist in the world. That's a big accomplishment, isn't it? And she is best known as the host of the international television series, The Joy of Music. This month, she celebrates a milestone birthday, as you just heard me mention. And of course, we are joined today by concert organist Paul Jacobs, uh, Pipe Dreams host Michael Barone, opera soprano Angela Brown, and a host of others. But without further ado, please help me welcome the first lady of the organ, Miss Diane Bish. Hi, Miss Diane. Thank you so much. Now, I want to just jump right in. First of all, I want to thank everyone for tuning in for this very this very special uh, celebration. So first of all, 80 years, Ms. Diane, you have accomplished so much. And when you hear me say that, what runs through your mind? A lot of work. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of music, a lot of cathedrals, and a lot of organs, and many, many friends. It's a real joy. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure it is. And speaking of joy, since you mentioned that word, and, and I know that we're going to talk in depth more, but since you mentioned that word joy, uh, talk to me, what inspired you to start the joy of music? Well, you know, I went to Europe when I was in high school and I saw many of the great organs and cathedrals and I said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to play these organs. And I really felt like I had listened to the recordings. Excuse my dog. <laughs> no problem. I had listened to the recordings of E. Power Biggs playing on the great organs of, of, of the world. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to see these organs as well as hear them mm. and to see what's around them and the cathedrals. And this, uh, so I thought television, that's the thing to do. So I started the Joy of Music in 1982 at Coral Ridge Church. Wow. And it's been going now 39 years. And uh, if you wonder why I'm old, that's why. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you so much. So I know we started with joy, but I wanna go back a little bit because first of all, I mean, 
you know, when you think about the organ and the great literature of the organ, you really can't even talk about it without mentioning Johann Sebastian Bach. And so he, you, of course, you know, he was very important as far as church music. And I want you to talk to me about where did your interest first start um, with the organ? I mean, I'm sure you could have been doing any other instruments or something like that, but where was the interest in the organ? How did that come about? Well, you know, I always, I used to hear the organ in church, of course. And then I used to listen to the tabernacle, the Mormon tabernacle on uh, every week. And it was, it was wonderful. The organ always sounded so uh, alive and uh, varied in sound. And I really enjoyed that. And I felt that, like I had a gift for the organ. I started playing the organ when I was 14 years old. Wow. Before that, I, I, you know, you need a keyboard background. So I started when I was six years old and uh, on lessons and then, and then began the organ. And my parents bought me an organ for our home where I could practice and uh, uh, play for people, which I, you know, whoever came in the house, my father insisted I play for them. And uh, it went on from there. That's amazing. Aren't our parents great? I just love the fact when you mentioned the fact how your parents nurtured you and bought that instrument uh, for you to practice on. Sometimes you don't find that experience. So that's always gratifying to hear that. Now, since I mentioned this reference to the organ, I want to um, draw our attention to this beautiful sinfonia that you play uh, by Johann Sebastian Bach. And so uh, that's going to be queued up. And we're going to hear just a little snippet of that. And I would like for you, after we finish, maybe just talk about uh, how do you like practice a piece like this? But first, let's listen to a little excerpt of this great symphonia by Bach. Thanking this 89. And to our audience, just bear with us. That is absolutely amazing. I, I'm just so fascinated with, with how fast you can play the dexterity. So, so Ms. Diane, talk to me about wh what does it take? You know, I know that we, we know that practice is important, but with a, such an intricate piece as that box symphonia, where do you start? <laughs> you start with the notes. <laughs> you start with practicing slowly, learning, and memorizing the notes and uh, working on technique. I think Bach is a very difficult in its own right, unlike other pieces, unlike the romantic literature, because uh, there are so many parts playing at one time, especially fugues of Bach. Uh, you know, you have the melody and then you in the right hand, then you have it in the left, in the feet, in the pedal and uh, Bach, there would be no church music and no no really great organ music to the extent that Bach wrote it. It was it's it's amazing. That is so true. 
Now, you know, during the course of this celebration, everybody, and to everyone tuning in, this is definitely a celebration. So I want you to just enjoy this, whether you drink a coffee or tea or either champagne, because it's five o'clock somewhere. Um, just, just this is a celebration for, for Miss Diane. So I want to continue, no matter what we achieve in this life, it always starts with our family. So could you talk about uh, Miss Diane, uh, the first time that you uh, went to Europe and how your sister played a role in that? Well, she, she worked in Northern Africa and I, uh, when I was in high school, I went there to see her and then we went to Europe afterwards. We saw the great organs of Europe and uh, one of the organs that, that really impressed me was the Strasbourg Cathedral in Strasbourg, France. The cathedral itself, the organ, uh, the organ is high up on the wall. I always tell in my concerts, you have to walk over a hundred steps to get up to the organ, walk outside uh, on the cathedral roof and into the organ loft. And it was so impressive and the sound just mesmerized me. The acoustics of the church, the beauty of the cathedral, the, the, um, uh, the, the amazing organ and how each each stop is a single wonderful voice. And uh, the, the old organs of 1700 and, and in, in the 1800s, the voices were so distinct on the organs. And then of course with the acoustics of eight seconds, seven seconds, nine seconds, the sound just rolls around in the church and enhances the sound of the organ. So I said to myself, I'm going to come back and play this organ and these many organs. And then I really felt led after that. I, uh, of course, I went to the University of Oklahoma with Mildred Andrews, who was such a great teacher. And uh, she inspired me to, to go to Europe. And uh, I went to the Conservatory of Music in Amsterdam. And I had grants to, to go other places in France. And so I studied and played the organs there and lived around the churches and lived around the organs. And uh, so I became even more inspired to show what I was experiencing. So that's- That is amazing. It is so funny. That, uh, I know you mentioned several people, but the one that jumps out at me, uh, well, you mentioned uh, France, the, the name Nadia Boulanger jumps out because mostly, um, in fact, my teacher at Shannon Noah studied with Nadia Boulanger and a few others. So I know that was certainly among your important great teachers and influences. So thank you so much. So now I think we actually have uh, to represent your family a clip that kind of sums up that. Oh, look at that. Hello, Aunt Diane. Greetings from beautiful Germany. On behalf of the Priest family, I would like to wish you a very happy 80th birthday. Hi, Aunt Diane. Greetings from Rose Hill, Kansas. I wish you a blessed birthday. And I am just so grateful for your inspiration in my life, for your dedication to excellence. You have always been a blessing, Auntie Di. Love you. And hello and happy birthday, Diane. Birthdays are very special and we praise God for them. It, you've been a joy to know. Again, I wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Hello, Auntie Diane. I am so thrilled to be here today, helping celebrate you with all these other fabulous people. And you have employed your utmost for his highest and now you've gifted us with your abundance of music and friendship and laughter and memories. 
Au revoir et joyeux anniversaire, Tata. And Diane, I just want to wish you the happiest and merriest of birthdays. And I want to let you know how much I appreciate you and how much I've had a really good time running around with you. Uh, me and you are kindred spirits in more ways than one. So again, happy birthday. Hi, Aunt Diane. Cynthia Priest here with my future daughter-in-law, Diana. Hi, it's so nice to meet you. I can't wait to see you. Wishing you a happy 80th birthday. Happy birthday to the one and only Diane Bish. Thank you for everything you've done. You are a wonderful person and truly an inspiration to so many others. Hope you have a fantastic day. Hello, I'm Judith Priest and I am Diane's oldest sister. There's just the two of us actually. After college, I went to uh, Algeria and she came to visit me one year. I think it was after she graduated. From high, from high school, and uh, we swam in the Mediterranean, and we saw some of Algeria, went as far as we could to the desert. Then we went to Europe. We went to about eight or nine different countries, and she got to see and hear the organs of Europe and loved them, particularly in those cathedrals with the acoustics. She continued when she came home and went to OU and excelled in organ. She was so good at it that she decided that that's what she wanted to do as a career. And she's blessed many people because of that. And I love you, Diane, and I'm very proud of you. And I thank you for your commitment to God, to music, and to everyone that loves you. We love you, too. This is a celebration, and nothing's going to spoil this celebration. So you all got the gist of the fact that was a wonderful montage from uh, Miss Diane's um, sister. We're going to go back, and maybe we can fit it back in towards the end. But I want to move ahead because we do have a very special guest who is on with us today, international renowned concert organist and recitalist, Mr. Paul Jacobs. Hi, Hello. Paul. Oh, happy birthday, Diane. Thank oh, you, Paul. Oh, so good to see you. Uh -oh. you and I am just delighted to be here to celebrate you, your accomplishments, the impact that your life has had on me personally, and millions of others. Well, thank you so much. And I've been so happy to, to be with you and your work. You're just a spectacular organist and teacher, and Juilliard is very fortunate to have you. I remember when I did the... Uh, master class there at Juilliard. And I, I thought the students were just outstanding. But I, you know, for someone like you to congratulate me is a real honor for me because you have done so much for the organ yourself. And I just appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. And I do send my greetings from all of the students, the impact that you had on them, your visit, your joy, um, your knowledge, your insights, and, and also your wit, your charm, your grace, all of that poured through. I remember that day so well. Uh, we had a full house for you on a Thursday morning in the recital hall. There's that beautiful picture of you. And um, I think one of the students you recall uh, admitted to having a lock of your hair <laughs> from years ago when you performed and he embraced you after the performance and a piece of your hair was on his jacket and he said he kept it in a sealed bag and he has it to this day. Oh my goodness. I, did <laughs> not, I don't think I realized that at the time, but that, that's a very interesting story. I wonder what other people have, what hair has fallen out. <laughs> Well, so, Paul, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So, Paul, when you first saw uh, Miss Diane and all her splendor, her sequins and her shoes, what did you initially think? I know I was mesmerized. 
Well, one thing that is is apparent is that Diane um, is a pioneer. I mean, before YouTube, before all of the social media, you were a trailblazer, truly, yeah. bringing the organ to millions of people, as you still do with your work. And you brought um, the beauty of this music, the beauty of these beautiful uh, buildings, these architectural marvels of the world to so many people. Um, I grew up in a small town in, in southwestern Pennsylvania, and I would, after uh, church services, would go to my grandparents that have food waiting, and it was always football on Sunday. Well, not when I arrived at two o'clock, the joy of music was coming on that television, so they had to go in the other room. And uh, they were ardent football fans, but let me tell you, they would occasionally peek in the room where I was watching you and would be very impressed. So, um, you know, that excited me, that excites oh. young people and young people who may not have encountered such uh, spectacular music making and architecture in any other way. And that's thanks to you. Well, you know, uh, speaking of that now, uh, when I first started, we had huge cameras and everything was so, we had to take a whole crew of nine people to Europe and all this heavy equipment to make these videos, but now you can do it with an iPhone or an iPad. And I'm so overjoyed to see what organists are doing around the country by just using their iPhone. And it's, it's quite amazing. And it's a joy for me, really. Yes. That's amazing. And, and before we let you go, Paul, you hit on something because uh, Miss Diane is definitely a trailblazer. She's not afraid to push the envelopes. I know that I mentioned about the sequins and the clothes, but it takes a lot to just step out of the box and be your true self. So you really hit something there. And I'm going to share a secret with some of you all. My email address is kind of like the male counterpart. It's Liberace. 06. And so I kind of, you know, when somebody sees my email, they're like, oh my goodness, why is your email? I said, because I love his flair. And I kind of think about that when, when we talk about that individuality that is Diane Bish. So thank you for kind of, you know, speaking to that because students definitely need to have that, that space where they can be individuals. Of course, the training, but just that space to really grow in their individuality as musicians. So thank you for lifting that in my spirit to bring that to you. So Paul, I know you have a full day, but we wanna thank you so much. And thank you so much for just being here for this special celebration honoring Diane Bish. It was an honor. Happy birth, Diane. Much love to you. Thank you, thank Paul, you. very much. God bless you. God bless you. Wasn't that a treat? Miss Diane, could you be, I know we kind of talked about it a little bit and you kind of uh, hit it on, hit on Joy of Music, but could you maybe talk about from your standpoint what that community uh, meant to you when you were doing the Joy of Music? Well, you know, uh, the Joy of Music has so many different facets to it. I mean, you, you have to decide where you're going to play. You have to decide what music you're going to play. You have to raise the money to do it. And you have to raise the money to, to open your office. You have to write the scripts. I think I've written over 5,000, 6,000 scripts for wow. over five, 500 programs. Then you have logistics and you have to get the airline and you have to get the special guests and, uh, uh, it's, it's just amazing what you have to go through to do it. That's fascinating. Well, I think that we have a, a wonderful video vignette of the people from the Joy of Music community showing you love. So let's watch that. Hi, Diane. I want to wish you a very happy birthday. I've had a privilege to record and perform with you with harp and organ uh, throughout the world. And I just wish you a wonderful day to celebrate. Happy birthday. This is a momentous one for you. You're still looking great. And we're looking for a year where we can all start opening up again and meeting again. Happy birthday, Diane. On this momentous occasion of your 80th birthday, I'd like to thank you for being such an inspiration to me and to so many other people. 
and thank you for sharing the gospel through the music and the arts. May God richly bless you in the upcoming years, and I wish you many happy returns. I never knew how many glorious organs there were in the world until I started watching your program many years ago. You truly are a blessing to the global pipe organ community. I will always have fond memories of the time I've spent with you and the Joy of Music organization. May God continue to richly bless you in the coming years. Hi, Diane. We met in 1991 when you brought the Joy of Music to Bloomington. My family had just moved to Bloomington. I needed a job. You had a position to fill, and the Lord led me to the joy of music. Thank you for your love and care for my family these many years. God bless you, Diane, and happy, happy birthday. Birthday, Diane. Thank you for all the priceless musical adventures. And uh, also, it's been a 28-year musical journey of adventure with you and the joy of music. We wish you a happy birthday and so many happy days and years ahead. Hi, Diane. Wishing you a very happy birthday and wanted to let you know I'm proud to be a part of the joy of music and to call you and Suzanne friends. Happy birthday, Diane. 1991. Can you believe it? 30 years ago, we started working together. It's been a blessing working by your side, listening to the great music that you performed. I've been so inspired by your work, Diane, and it's been a blessing to be with you. I hope that this day is special, that God blesses you richly, and you have many more happy birthdays. God bless, Diane. We hear that this is your milestone birthday. And we have attended 131 concerts in the United States and Canada. We have put on our car over 109,000 miles. We ha love you and happy, happy birthday. birthday. And in recent years, it has been my pleasure to be able to share your music with the online world, introducing many people on YouTube to your talent. And I look forward to continuing to do so in the future. Of course, we have all kinds of special guests, but today we are so honored to have the host of Pipe Dreams, Michael Barone with us. And so he's going to join us right now. So I'm going to admit him. And I don't think he's at his, his desk, though. I think he's there. He's there. there we go. He is. Hello there. Mr. Barrow, how are you? I'm fine. I've been confused because I've tried linking through and I've looked for the YouTube and I haven't seen anything. And so uh, happy birthday, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Well, Thanks. Mr. Barrow, it's such an honor to have you here. I'm such a fan. I've, I've been such an avid listener of your show. But I want to talk to you about your relationship with with Diane Bish, when did you first meet her or encounter her artistry as an organist? Um, I'm not entirely sure when I first encountered her via other media, but I met her for the first time during the Houston AGO convention back in, was it 88? When Diane was playing at Second Baptist Church on the huge Rogers uh, pipe organ in that space. And I, Let's see, at that point, it was uh, that was the fifth time that I was involved in recording national AGO conventions. And I was the guy with the equipment there to record Diane. She was a little unsettled because something had happened with the memory system with that organ and many of her combinations, of which there were numerous, had disappeared. And she was frantically... Uh, attempting to reset her combination buttons. She played a spectacular recital and I got a good recording thereof and have used some of it on Pipe Dreams. And uh, that was the beginning. I made. I don't know that I ran into Diane again until some years much more recent. I happened to be in Bloomington and I thought, well, gosh, she's possibly in Bloomington. While I'm there, maybe we could get together for lunch. And uh, I contacted her and she was in fact 
in Indiana and not in Florida, and we had a nice lunch. <laughs> yeah. I do. Remember, do you remember that? You 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 remember? Of course, you, I remember you, that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I I remember you saying, and and I'm I'm responding to it in a way today. You said, you know, you've got it easy, Barone. You don't have to look good on radio. <laughs> so I, here I, that was so the difference between radio and television. You yeah. To, yeah. Which That's, is why I have a tie on for you today, Diane. So happy <laughs> birthday. Oh my trying, God. trying to look good. Um, I, I, I must say that whatever it is that I think I do, what you do has me in total awe because it's, it's one thing to write up a script, figure out what you're going to say, uh, be able to edit it in the studio afterwards, uh, stitch together someone else's performances from all over the world, and, and make a nice little package. You know, it's, it's Pipe Dreams is okay, but you have to not only think of what you're going to say and then remember to say it in front of the camera, while the wind is blowing through your hair or you're making sure that you don't step off a, a steep precipice into the abyss, uh, then you have to go into the church and in the limited time that they make available to you, play spectacularly and flawlessly for the camera and be a nice lady on the tour <laughs> to all the people right. who, are, who are traveling along with you. I, you know, I live in a little, in a, in a, in a, uh, a closed box by comparison. You know, I, I, I rarely get out to see people and it's probably just as well. You have to be a diplomat, uh, an onstage artist and a peerless musician simultaneously. And for that, people ought to be bowing down <laughs> at your feet or sending you dozens and dozens of roses in appreciation. You're, you're just amazing. Well, Paul, I, I have to interrupt you and say that uh, you are fantastic, what you have done for the organ. And I, I greatly admire what you do and how you've done it and how you brought so many people to the organ. And you know, we started the Joy Music the same year, uh, the Joy Music and your program we started the same year. Wow. Yes. 1982. Yep. My first broadcast was January. I can't remember the exact date, but January, the first Sunday of January, 1982. Yes. And, and mine also in January. So uh, I would say the Lord had his hand on us and you and many others. And the, the organ has a great instrument. Well, uh, the organ is a great instrument, and it has in us two great advocates. There's no question as to what the Lord had his hand on. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, we, we all are, are called to do different things with our talents. I mean, you, you I mean, I couldn't do what you do. And, uh, and Paul Jacobs, who we just talked with, I mean playing all the Bach organ works for memory and things like that. We're just called to do different things and we have the ability and the gifts to do it. And you have the great gift to do this radio program and travel around and speak to organists. Well, so. I, I, anything, if, if the Lord were doing anything on my behalf, he simply opened a little door, pointed me in that direction. And I uh, was, either wise or foolish enough to follow down that long path, not knowing where it was going. I mean, this I started out in radio with no intention of continuing in radio. I was, I presume, going to go back to college, get an advanced degree of some sort, and probably end up teaching at some small college somewhere from which I would have retired by now. But here I am. <laughs> um, well, Mr. Barone, we have certainly enjoyed you. And thank you so much for joining us for this tribute. And we just appreciate your presence here today. It's my delight to be here. And I salute Diane. Thank truly, you. truly thank the you great so lady much. of the pipe organ here in the United States. Love thank you so thank much. You so my love to you. My love to you. Same to you. 
That was a wonderful conversation, but we're not through yet. Can you all believe it? So that was Michael Barone, host of Pipe Dreams. And isn't that fascinating how both shows started the same year? That's amazing. But we have another treat for you all. We are going to treat you all to a wonderful conversation between uh, Miss Diane and soprano Angela Brown. And this is a fascinating conversation, and we're going to watch this now. It's going to be so engaging. And this is a conversation, and then we'll play a little excerpt uh, from her performance. Birthday with 20 extra lovable years, Miss Diane. Oh, thank you, Angela. And thank your doggy, too. What a beautiful dog. Yes, her name is Jazz. And she's full of uh, those fast notes. You see that? Yes, that's, that's a good name for an opera star like you. <laughs> yeah, we, yes, we have great We fun. had a fantastic time. Yes. You, we, you sang with the Joy of Music in Germany. You came over. Yes, I and did. I had so much fun. That was the first time it was Inspire, right? That right, Spire, Germany. And that, that's the first time we performed together. And it was just beautiful. And so many people have commented on it. Yes, fantastic. Great fun. And that was the first time I got to see so many obelisks in the, in the town square. And then I learned what all those obelisks <laughs> meant. So we'll keep it family oriented. Yes. <laughs> and then we did uh, St. Louis Cathedral. Mm -hmm. which is a gorgeous cathedral. Yes, ma'am. And that was just fabulous. It was. And I cannot wait to recreate something like that in a cathedral, oh, somewhere here in America or in Indianapolis. So that Well, was we, we will do it. And uh, the joy of music, we just heard you sing glory so many times. And, and uh, you've been all over the world singing opera and I'm, I'm very proud of you, and I really appreciate your calling and, and wishing me that that happy birthday. That's yes. really special. Happy to you. God bless you, Miss Diane. Thank you for having me. God and bless you, you, too. And God bless Jazz. Yes. Bye-bye. That was a wonderful, wonderful treat. And so, um, Ms. Diane, the thing that fascinates me about you, um, you, you are marking an 80th birthday. And the fact that I'm sure that you have seen mostly all there is to be seen. You know, sometimes people think they're doing something new, but you have, you have had such a rich experience, whether it's in Europe at the cathedrals, whether it's, it's in St. Louis at the cathedral. But I want to talk about this idea, how you really make your music available to everyone. You know, somebody, when they saw that I was interviewing you, there's a wonderful musician in Baltimore. His name is Dr. Kenneth Dean, and I call him Maestro. He's at the City Temple there in Baltimore. But he let me know that you played a wonderful recital there. And he showed me this beautiful picture. And so it just really spoke to me the fact that music is universal and music is for everyone. And you certainly have endeared that sentiment. So I want to personally say thank you so much to you for that. Well, thank you. You know, uh, in concert or television, you, you really need to, to uh, think about who your listener is. and. Um, play something for everybody. And, you know, a lot of people on television have never seen the organ, they've never heard the organ. And that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to show it up close along with great artists and art and architecture and all the other things. And that's why I wear the uh, uh, rhinestone shoes and the fancy tops because it gets people's attention on television, whether you want to admit it or not, it brings in the viewer. 
Well, you know, I have these wonderful jackets and I started to wear one, but I said, this is your day. So I wasn't going to do that. But uh, at one point I, I can show you my jacket. I have one with all these sequins and things too. And you're right. They're definitely showstoppers and people pay attention. <laughs> they do. I've had people come up to me all over and they say, oh, I know you. Uh, you're the lady with the, all those sequins and fancy dresses. I've seen you on television. It's crazy. So hopefully we'll be able to go back and get some of those other greetings from um, Allen Oregon Company. But oh, that's a good point right there. Talk to me. What does it feel like when you have a whole organ line that you curated and designed? Could you talk to me about that signature organ line at Allen Oregon? Well, yes, they, they make wonderful organs. And what they're doing now is going to famous uh, cathedral organs in Europe and sampling the sounds, and then they bring them back. And for my organ, uh, I put, I like uh, fiery reeds and beautiful rich strings and sparkling flutes. And I put the sounds on, on the organ that I like. And, uh, that, that's what I did, and, and uh, it's a beautiful instrument, and I love to play play it. That's amazing. Well, you know, um, you know, we could even have this this afternoon together if it wasn't for a very special person. And I want to have Miss Janet to come on and introduce herself, and then, of course, make her remarks on this special occasion. Okay. I'm just going to come over here and, and join. <laughs> I think this is the easiest. First of all, I want to say thanks to everybody for your patience because um, we had we did have a few technical difficulties, which I apologize for. We're working as hard as we can over here on the side. <laughs> so, but um, I also have one other thing that I need to be sure. That while while she's walking across the well, room. I want to say that Janet has been my manager and friend for years and years and years. And there's nobody like her. And she has done so much for me and the joy of music. And uh, I, I'm so proud of her. And uh, if anybody needs a manager, this, <laughs> this, is one, this is the one to get. Well, it, it, yeah, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if it were not for Diane Bish. And um, she taught me so many things and, and, and I, won't, I will tell you that she taught me what it is to be a strong female business person. I think Rachel, her, her niece would echo that. Um, and she taught me how important it is that you never lose sight of your faith. And she taught me the meaning of true friendship. Mm, mm. True friendship I learned from Diane Bish. And so all the music and the other things were wonderful things that added on, but those were things that will always matter in my life. But there's somebody else who has something to say to you who couldn't be with us today and a beautiful friend of Diane's. Her name is Sung Suk Lee. And she said, Bless, blessed, happy, joyful birthday to you, Diane Bish. You guided me many ways in church music because I didn't have the knowledge about church music or repertoire. Before I was born again, it was only opera for me. You composed the music for my life story from Korea to America called Story and Song. Uh, and she talks about how grateful she is about that. She says, Diane, you are blessed by and very special to our Lord and to me. Blessed, healthy birthday to you, Sung Suk Lee. Oh, that's one. Oh, that's beautiful. And Sung was on many, many episodes of The Joy of Music. Oh, my. Yes, yes, <laughs> indeed. Thank you, Janet. Oh. Janet has, has, this is a very uh, difficult uh, layout that she has that's put together for us. And I would like to say something that's, could I, Patrick, right yeah, now? Please. Very important. The most important thing, of course, our music, we have to have the technical ability. We have to practice. We have to be focused. But I want to say to all the organists listening today and musicians, uh, each one of us is called by God for a purpose. 
and he's given us gifts and no matter where you are you have a gift and you have a great gift but it's your responsibility to to give yourself to the lord and say what do you want me to do with my life and then you do everything possible you practice you give it everything you have and then you pray that the lord will bless it and he has blessed uh, me and the joy of music beyond anything I could ever imagine. And uh, so I want to thank him. I want to thank him today. Amen. You know, I, I would be remiss if I did not share my full circle moment with you because I don't, I don't know if you remember this. I'm sure you do. But it was back in 2004. Three, I want to say, you performed a recital in my hometown, Petersburg, Virginia. It was St. Paul's Episcopal Church, which is referred to as Bristol Parish. And they had just, they, they have a Skinner organ, but the Skinner organ is, um, it was um, redone and you, you uh, played an organ recital there. But the full circle moment is I never imagined that all these years later, back in 2012, you granted me um, my first interview with you. So I want to thank you for that. And of course, it was a straight podcast. It wasn't this video uh, situation now. So we've all grown. But there's a lovely picture on the screen. I want to um, talk about this picture. This is actually Dr. Kenneth Dean. And that's you, of course, uh, Miss Diane. You're at City Temple. And that's after the organ recital that you gave there. So when he brought this to my attention, I told him I had to get this picture in. So thank you so much. Oh, isn't that amazing? Thank you so much. It is. So again, I just want to say happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and we're wishing you many more. And I know your remarks were really almost like the, the final remarks, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of play this by ear, but I just wanna thank you so much and what you mean to the whole performing arts community, the organist community, our sacred music community, just thank you. I It's so much I could say, you have contributed so much, but Miss Diane, thank you so much. And to the listeners, you probably hear me keep saying Miss Diane, that's because my Southern ways yeah. Or with me. I could dare call her just Diane. So Miss Diane, that's kind of the middle of the road. But Miss Diane, thank you so much just for all that you do, the artistry, uh, just everything that you bring to the organ. And you are indeed the first lady of the organ. And why I say that, uh, when somebody first referred to you as the first lady of the organ, what went through your mind? Well, you know, that was in a magazine uh, <laughs> maybe 50 years ago in Miami from the classical music station, Fugue. And uh, they, uh, they call me that and other magazines have, and newspapers have called me that since then. So it's kind of stuck, but I didn't say it and I don't, <laughs> I didn't make it up. <laughs> and there are many, fabulous women organists and of course male organists so i i just i thank all of them for their gifts and what they're doing yes uh miss dad you certainly are humble but whoever that author was that said it first he had it right you are indeed the first lady of the organ and we celebrate you on this day we know that your birthday is on the 25th but we wanted to fit you now in this space and just as we uh, round up. And as uh, Janet mentioned, we are going to go back and get those family greetings and kind of change things up a little bit. But I want to thank all of your fans around the world for joining us. And I want to thank you personally for allowing me to have this platform. You could have picked anybody to, to host this, but you chose me. And I am eternally grateful uh, that you would share this space with me and it is such an honor so again uh, Miss Diane thank you so much we're not finished yet but we're almost at the um, noon hour here of course in America on the east coast but I just want to again thank you I think we're about ready now to just go back and see can we get those other uh, tributes happy happy birthday Diane we have so many memories starting when you and Roger 
came to our church at Coral Ridge. And then when the concert series began in 1972, of course, you were very involved and helped me find artists, or helped us find artists. And in 1975, you brought us Van Cliburn because he was your friend, and that pretty much put us on the map. You are indeed the First Lady of the Organ, and always will be. We all love you and wish you a very, very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Diane. God bless you. You're a great lady. You've done great things for the world. We honor you. Hello, friends. I'm Daryl Miller, and I bring you greetings from Nashville, Tennessee. But right now, I'm actually at my church, which is in Franklin, 15 miles south of Nashville, where I get to play a wonderful Aeolian Skinner. Uh, I met Diane in 1971, but the fun thing was we had a birthday party. It was on a Thursday night. Not sure what year it was, but the sign outside the choir room says Daryl's 40. Roger's 50, and Diane has a birthday too, but nobody fessed up to say how old she is. I don't know. I think it's a secret, but it doesn't matter. So I just want you to know, great lady, that uh, you've been so kind to us. I appreciate your friendship for these years, and I wish you many, many more. And as the guys say at the end of the happy birthday song, with that double diminished chord, and many more. You've always been one of the funniest people I know, and the best organist I've ever known. So have a wonderful birthday. I love you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I think so much about the joy that you have spread literally throughout the world with your music. And then I feel privileged as someone who has gained joy from you as a personal friend. So I'm just going to say, I hope that you have many more years to come of spreading joy and making stories. And God bless you on this great day. Happy birthday, Diane. It's been a real pleasure and an honor to know you for over 30 years. And I wish you many, many more years of bringing the joy of music to the whole world. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Diane Bish. I recall this time 30 years ago that Janet Gerald was breaking and entering into your home on Baby Drive so that we could make a very multifaceted birthday tape for you. I know I speak for a ton of organists uh, who, for whom you've been the guiding light, the inspiration. And, uh, and but I'm singularly fortunate to call you a close friend and have worked with you all these years. Know how much I love you. And I hope you have the happiest of days. Hey, Diane, happy 80th birthday. I made it back in the pool. Bye. Happy birthday, Diane. I hope you have a wonderful time celebrating your special day. Happy birthday, Diane. I pray that you are overwhelmed with love and encouragement on your very special day. I've been watching you play the organ since I've been a little boy. You are one of the many reasons I have such a love for church music. We thank God for you here at Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, where you will always be the First Lady of the Organ. So, I, so what's running through your mind when you hear all these different tributes? You know, we've heard from your colleagues, we've heard from your family. You know, we can't, again, we can't be, do much of anything without our family. So, Miss Diane, how does that make you feel, all these people showing you so much love? Well, it makes me feel humbled by it, really. Uh, not deserve it because, you know, uh, my family has... Uh, blessed my life so, so much with music and friendship and love. And my parents, you know, uh, they, my father used to love to hear me play the organ, made all the friends that came to the house sit down and listen to me, which I didn't like very much, but that's all right. <laughs> and my mother played the piano and, uh, and loved music. And so, if it weren't for them, I, I, 
I wouldn't be in music today. How wonderful. So can you all believe our time together is just about over, but we're going to hang around just a little bit uh, to make up for the beginning. But again, Miss Diane, thank you so much. Wishing you a very, very happy birthday. And so we're going to stay on just a little bit because a few things uh, that we're going to do. And so uh, as we as we close, I just want to say again, thank you all so much, all of the fans around the world. Thank you so much for joining us for this very uh, special celebration. So as we get ready to sign off, Janet, am I on track? I just want to make sure that I'm, that I'm on track. You um, are. Thank you so much. So I, again, I just want to say again, I am Patrick B. McCoy, and you've been watching me host, rather, uh, Across the Arts in partnership with J.E.J. Artists. Uh, I couldn't have done this without her, or we couldn't have done it without each other. So we're just so glad and elated that you could join us for this very special episode celebrating the 80th birthday of legendary concert organist, the first lady of the organ, Miss Diane Bish. I hope that you all will subscribe to the Across the Arts YouTube channel and follow me, Patrick McCoy, on all social platforms. And also make sure you definitely follow the Diane Bish organist page. Again, I am Patrick McCoy. This has been Across the Arts. And as we played the whole episode out, we're going to hear a little snippet of Miss Bish playing uh, a little bit of the Vidor uh, Takala, which is, of course, is a favorite. But before that, I hope that you all will join me next Friday, same time as I interview the internationally acclaimed conductor, organist, and pianist, Wayne Marshall. Next time around this, this, um, this time at, this, uh, at noon, same station. So keep your eyes peeled for that information. Again, I am Patrick D. McCoy in partnership with JEJ -E Artists, this has been Across the Arts, and we wish that you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Patrick. Thank so you. God bless you. God bless you. We're gonna hear a little bit of the Takata. <laughs> trick up my sleeve.
Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday again. You've been watching Across the Arts for this very special episode in partnership with JEJ Artists. And like Miss Bish said earlier, if you need management, JEJ Artists is the place to go. Janet, thank you so much. Couldn't have done this without you. And again, I am Patrick B. McCoy, your host, and this has been across the arts. Oh, thank you, Janet. And so we're going to sign off now. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. But again, thank you all so much. And we appreciate you so much for joining us for this very special celebration, honoring the 80th birthday of the First Lady of the Oregon, Miss Diane Bish. Thank you.